There is this one barrier in Super Mario Maker, which we never found a way around. This one thing that just prevented us from building truly insane stuff. The death barrier. Basically, we never found a way to transfer information between devs. We were able to read and write information in tons of different ways. But as soon as our beloved plumber dies, the information always gets reset. Death was just a barrier we were not able to pierce through. Until recently. Because recently a way was found to transfer exactly one bit of information in between devs in Super Mario Maker 2. So today we're first going to take a look at a small stage that uses this concept and afterwards we're going to discuss how all of it works. So you ready? Let's do this! Okay, so Mario's day at work starts like most of his days do, in front of an ouching saw blade and a door. Once he walks through the door, he enters a very strange contraption. As soon as the loading is over, Mario jumps upwards, grabs a red coin and hits a checkpoint flag afterwards. To his left is a small muncher note block setup that triggers an on-off block and there are two paths forward, but only one of them is currently open. So our plumber takes the only open path and suddenly he's in the middle of a very traditional stage. There are Koopas waddling around, there are sharp saw blades traveling around and evil golden coins trying to ruin everyone's day who happens to run into them by accident. Business as usual. So Mario decides to happily make his way through the stage while dodging all the dangerous threats along the way and trying not to... Um... Mario? Mario? Well... Um... Sorry. Hmm... It, it looks like Mario just doesn't feel like working today. Luckily, that's why each stage is on a timer. You see, if our big red plumber refuses to work, the game after a while just kills him and replaces him with his brother. Hooray! So now Luigi respawned at the flagpole. Once again, only the door to the left is open and once again Luigi, whose nickname I assume to be Bigger Green, finds himself in a traditional stage. So here is where it gets interesting. At the top there is a red coin, but this red coin is no ordinary red coin. See, this red coin actually carries information through the realm of life and death. If Luigi goes for the coin and is fast enough to pick it up, then the information that this coin got collected gets stored permanently. And every time from then on when the stage gets loaded the layout is a bit different the level becomes easier. Luckily for us, Bigger Green is not only fast enough to grab the red coin, but he also agreed to jump into a saw blade afterwards so that we're able to take a look at the easier version of the stage. Thank you Green Buddy, you will be missed. So here Toad finds himself once again in the contraption at the beginning. But what is this? This time the path towards the pipe is open, but the path towards the door is locked. This is because the red coin got collected previously. From now on this path is always the one that is open. This path takes our mushroom shaped hero into a small shop system. Toad is now allowed to choose exactly one of the three options here. He is either allowed to grab a useful dinosaur, a yum yum one up or a delicious fire flower. Looks like Toad decided to go for the dinosaur. After hitting his head against the question block, the Yoshi promptly gets dispatched. The other question blocks now become unusable to ensure that Toad doesn't try to rob the shop. The pipe now takes our jumping hero and his dinosaur back to the stage from before. Collecting the red coin previously not only gave Toad access to the shop, but the red dotted line blocks inside the stage are now actually less dotted but pretty solid, which makes a lot of the jumps easier. Thanks to this, Toad has absolutely no troubles to make his way towards the famous flagpole at the end. Hooray! Alright, so how does the shop system work and how do we transfer information in between devs? Let's start with the shop system. So the reason why this shop system works here is actually surprisingly simple. We simply use super globally loaded one-way doors to overflow the sprite limit or the ELB. As soon as there are 100 entities loaded that count towards this limit, the game refuses to spawn new ones. One-way doors are super global items, meaning they always count towards this limit. The stage is set up in such a way that the ELB limit is at exactly 99 when we enter the room. Once we hit our surprisingly mushroom shaped head against one of the bricks, a spring spawns and the limit hits 100. The spring simply pushes the items upwards into a small dispatching mechanism and afterwards no springs are allowed to spawn since the LB is now at 100. 
Super simple stuff. Next, a bit more complicated trick. So first, huge, gigantic, enormous and tremendous shout out to YouTube user Comex. As far as I can tell, he's the one who discovered the trick that makes all of this work. And he made a really quick showcasing video about it on his YouTube channel. You can find the link in the description. Okay, but what is the trick that Comex used? Well, it's actually a really clever combination of a couple of tricks. The most important two are the following. First, red coins have super weird respawn properties and second, red coins count towards the ELB or the normal sprite limit, but, and here's the catch, they only count towards it during their 34 frame spinning animation after they got collected. So this coin here does not count towards the sprite limit. DLB is at 99 here, meaning that the muncher in the left block is able to spawn. If we, however, try to spawn the other muncher and grab the red coin right before it, then something interesting happens. This muncher can't spawn, since the grabbing animation of the pink coin suddenly takes up one ELB spot. Once the animation is over, the other muncher can be spawned as normal. Cool. So that's the first puzzle piece that we need to carry information through death. The second one is the really weird spawning behavior of red coins after respawning at a checkpoint. So to make this simple, here's the first law of red coin respawnment. Red coins that got collected before grabbing a checkpoint do not respawn. We can see this in the stage we just took a look at. The red coin here gets collected the first time Mario enters the room, right before he hits the flag, meaning that after every death, the coin does not respawn. So here is where all of this gets really interesting, because there is a second law of red coin respawnment. If all red coins got collected once, all red coins will respawn again afterwards. Yep, I know it's weird, but that's how the game works. We can see this here. Here we start the game and the coin doesn't respawn. But if we now grab the red coin and then die, then the coin suddenly respawns. The coin is directly below Mario. So as soon as he spawns, the coin immediately gets collected and counts towards the LB for about half a second. The stage is obviously set up in such a way that the LB at this spot is at 99 every time the game gets loaded. The coin only spawns if the other red coin ever got collected during any previous try of the stage. So if the red coin respawns, then we know that the other coin got collected during a previous try. And it also means that the ELB is at 100 for 34 frames after spawning. If the coin does not respawn, then we know that the red coin wasn't collected during any previous try and the ELB is at only 99. The rest of this contraption is simply this Muncher node block setup. The Muncher touches the node block within the time frame of the coin collection animation, meaning that the node block only releases its content if the red coin never got collected before. Ladies and gentlemen, we are successfully sending information through the death barrier. We preached one of the things I always assumed to be impossible in the game. We basically cheated death. And as it turns out, it was actually surprisingly simple. Huge thanks again to Comex for letting me know about this trick. I hope you enjoyed this little video. If you did, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and maybe feel especially Orpheus today and want to hit the subscribe button as well. I hope that all of you have a wonderful day and to see you soon. Goodbye.